Today we will talk about the structural damping with respect to some more complex conditions. So, let us look into that and towards the end we will also show you how we can demonstrate the same thing experimentally. So, what we are going to focus today on how to design for the structural damping such that we get enhanced material damping, so that we can extract maximum from a structure at the structural level itself. So, let us consider this simple problem that this is a beam which is subjected to pure bending as you can see here that the beam is subjected to bending here and you may consider that it is something like a bending case like this where it is subjected to pure bending and having a symmetric cross section with respect to x and y axis. So, this is one axis that is the longitudinal axis with respect to which it has a symmetric cross section that means up and down are symmetric as well as with respect to the y axis it has a symmetric cross section both the sides are symmetric. So, that is a simple case. Now, for this type of a case uh, the simple theory of bending we have to keep in our mind and that is m x the m is the bending. So, m x over i z z that is the area moment of inertia about the z z z axis which is actually perpendicular to the plane here. So, uh, that m x over i z z is actually nothing but sigma x max over the distance. So, basically if some cross section is subjected to pure bending like say this is the beam that we are considering and this is the section, then in that section you will see that a completely equal and opposite stress distribution about the neutral axis will take place. And this distance is actually half of the thickness. So, that is why in any of the extreme fibers you are going to see the maximum stress which is sigma x max and the corresponding distance from the neutral axis is T by 2. And that is also equal to the stress at any other location let us say I choose some inter interim location the stress at that location divided by the distance from the neutral axis which is y in this case. Okay. So, that means, if I consider a small cross section here, then this is at a distance y and for this if the stress here is sigma x, this sigma x by y is actually equal to sigma x max at this point divided by t by 2. So, that is the simple theory of bending. So, with this kind of conditions, if we next actually look into it that our relationship the first equation is m x over i z z as sigma x max over t y 2 which is equals to sigma x over y that is what is our first equation. Now, let us find out also we will use this equation, but let us find out that what is the maximum elastic energy that is stored in the beam for a complete cycle of vibration. And with some assumptions like L as the length of the beam and E as the Young's modulus. Now, we can actually get this equation here uh, as W s as half 1 over 2 E i z z times integration 0 to L m x square t x. So, that is the total energy elastic energy that is stored in the beam because we are considering it as a conservative system. Now, if I use this equation 1 and equation 2 together, then what we are going to see is that uh, we will find that this relationship will come now in which this m x square 
we are replacing by this equation and that means m x square can be represented as sigma. So, m x as sigma x max times i z z divided by t y 2. So, 2 goes to the top. So, that is what you know we are having here that is where the 2 is appearing for us and this is what is sigma x max square is coming and i z z square is not a function of d x because the uh, cross section actually remains constant that is what we have assumed in this case. So, that is why i z z square is out of the integration itself and of course, uh, the uh, 2 e i z z is there. So, this uh, e i z z uh, is actually remaining again modulus of elasticity and i z z are remaining constant in this particular equation. So, with this you know we can actually simplify it and we will get a relationship of w s as uh, we have seen here in which we will be having uh, variables like i z z w s as a function of i z z the sigma x max square uh, integration 0 to l d x and e and t square. So, some geometric parameters and some material parameters of the system. Now, we also know that the damping stress amplitude relationship which I said in the very beginning that is what we are heading to is that a loss factor definition. So, in which we need the damping the energy that is dissipated which is j sigma to the power n. So, the energy that is dissipated per cycle is j sigma to the power n by 2 pi and uh, the ratio of modal loss factor is this divided by w s. So, this is what we are finding in uh, this expression. Now, d s we can try to integrate it because j sigma to the power n is actually per unit volume. So, we need to find out that if b y is at any point the width of the system the strip then. So, b y and d y is the area of the system and that from minus t by 2 to t by 2. So, this is minus t by 2 to t by 2 we are integrating this thing. So, that is kind of giving us the area and then sigma x to the power n comes into the picture because that is also varying with respect to y the stress is not going the same. So, this thing together from minus t y 2 to t y 2 and then from the length of the entire you know sample the area which is subjected to the length that is subjected to pure bending say it is 0 to l. So, that we need to integrate that is the second integration for and that is multiplied by 2 j that is how uh, the 2 j the 2 term is coming because we are doing it from minus t y 2 to t y 2 or otherwise we have to do it from 0 to t. So, that is why the 2 is coming and j is of course, the damping constant that we had earlier discussed for structural damping. So, with all these uh, definition of the terms now we can put sigma x to the power n as actually uh, sigma x uh, y at slash t y 2 the whole to the power n and then d y d x and we can find out that what is this you know the final expression. And now we can use this expression in d s and also we have already found out what is w s. So, we apply all these things together the terms look little bit uh, algebraically involved, but it is as such it is very innocuous because it is just simply that we have several integrations to carry out that is all. So, what you will find is that this is how the entire you know system would look like that 2 to the power n into 4 j this j of course, will be capital divided by t to the power n times this integration 0 to l sigma x max to the power n d x and the other integration is 0 to t y 2 b y y to the power n d y. So, that is what is my top part and in the bottom part 
it is dy 2 pi w. So, 2 pi is here and then the work done which is 2 i z z 0 to l sigma x max square d x. So, if we now you know simplify all the things and we can get the two term out the j out modulus of elasticity out basically those terms we are taking it out which are not going to change either with respect to x or with respect to y. So, that is how our this expression will be coming up and which can be further simplified at clubbing all these terms together all the constants and all the variables in one side then the integrations one by one that two integrations are there. Now, in this integration there is this term sigma x max which will be coming out and we would like to normalize it. We would like to normalize it with respect to the endurance strength which is the strength against fatigue. So, instead of sigma x max we would like to put it as sigma x max divided by sigma n and then this is how it will come into picture. Now, that you are normalizing it here it should also come out as a particular property here you are pre multiplying the same. So, that the effect will not be altered only thing we are normalizing the sigma x max. So, this will be our final normalized relationship of the system. Now, with this if we actually evaluate eta s what we are going to see is that eta s is going to have three parts in it three clear parts the first part here and that uh, this part is if you look at it that the first part here with respect to uh, the eta s uh, components that defines eta s then the first part has all the material properties in it. Then we have a stress related part which is the loading related part you may say and then we have a third part here which is actually the geometry related part. So, we have the first factor we will call it as the material factor beta m even though there are some constants in it, but the most importantly three material factors are there j, e and sigma n to the power n minus 2. The second factor is actually the stress distribution factor because that is talking about how sigma x max is distributed all over the length of the system. So, that is the longitudinal stress distribution factor and the third factor if you look at it that is a cross sectional shape factor and that talks about that how this cross section is changing. So, you have b y y to the power n d y slash t to the power n minus 2 times i z z. So, clearly speaking our loss factor has actually dependence on three factors now material factor, longitudinal stress distribution factor and cross sectional shape factor which we will be calling henceforth as beta m, beta s and beta c. Now, let us look at it that for the same material and loading condition how different cross sections that means, beta c how that will create a variation in eta s itself. Let us see that type of a case. So, here we have considered three cross sections one is a rectangular cross section, another is a circular one and the third one is a diamond cross section. So, rectangular, circular and diamond cross section and their thickness is the same in all the three cases. Now, the beta c for n equals to 2 is actually also same if you try to evaluate you will see beta c for n equals to 2 is not changing, but beta c will change for n greater than 2 like for n equals to 3. Here you can see that rectangular section is going to give you about 0.75, diamond is going to give you about 0.6 and circular of course, you have to carry out this integration, but if you do all these things then what you will find is that among uh, these particular cases of course, rectangular is uh, definitely better than the diamond uh, cross section. In fact, the reason why it is better is because with respect to the uh, you know neutral axis if you compare between the two 
in the rectangular cross section there are relatively more materials which are away whereas, here diamond cross section more materials are close to the neutral axis and less materials are away. So, as a result the beta c is actually more for the rectangular cross section and less for diamond. Now, if n equals to 2 if you keep and beta c also equals to 2, then for all the cross sections uh, the eta s would become the same as j e over pi that means, the system the geometry dependence will not be there the loss factor will only depend on j and modulus of elasticity. On the other hand for other values like for beta c for n equals to 3 you will see that this separation is coming out. Also keeping in mind that it is the best if you go away from the neutral axis possibly this type of configuration where you are maximum away from the neutral axis will be always good for this system. So, these are actually called I sections and these are found out to be having better damping capacity than diamond or circular or rectangular section. Now, based on the expressions of the overall loss factor we have talked about how you can use beta c, but we can also see the effect of this term that is the you know the stress concentration part of it. Okay. So, the stress distribution factor the beta s itself. So, we can have a look at this particular term. So, towards that direction if you look at it you will see that you have some options there. For example, this is what I am going to experimentally prove you later on that for example, instead of having a single structural material what if we actually put groups here. The groups will increase the stress concentration and in these groups what if we fill it up with the high damping material. So, tentatively we are going to get two advantages because we have the groups. So, we have higher stress. So, there will be stress concentration. So, the cross sectional property related damping would increase and also because we have replaced this material by some solid viscoelastic inserts which is itself a high damping material. So, my damping is going to be doubly benefited by this type of a system. Now, in some cases they have also tried another variation of it that means, they have used an annular one instead of having full area they have used an annular one. This is also a good way of doing the things because at least uh, you know you are using the partly the material and stress concentration you are generating anyway because of this particular you know use of uh, this particular cross section. I told you that the uh, structural damping can be actually improved if we can uh, control the stress in the cross section of any structural member and further to that in uh, the region where you are actually concentrating the stress if you can have viscoelastic material then the loss factor will be even more in those region and as a result by actually altering the load path and as well as by applying uh, damping materials we can enhance the structural damping enormously. Now, today I am going to show you one experiment through which we can demonstrate it. So, this one is an aluminum bar as you can see it is a solid aluminum bar and this aluminum bar we are going to put it on this particular test setup and we are going to hit this aluminum bar with a small impact hammer. This entire test procedure is actually used to find out the modulus of elasticity and the velocity of sound in a solid and this follows a particular ASTM code which is known as ASTM E1876. Now, according to that code we have designed the supporting system and there are wires there and all we have to do is to actually keep this system here nicely suspended on this and then uh, we have to hit it with this impact hammer and this sound system is going to pick up the sound that will be generated from such a system and it is uh, we are going to show it to you the data that will be captured in, a, um, in, in the computer and we will show you that the structural insert 
what is the level of damping and if we change the structure inside um, if we is uh, for solid aluminum what is the level of damping and if we change this solid aluminum by something which has actually the structural inserts how this is going to get changed. So, we actually take this solid and we actually hit it. So, you can see this clear and loud sound which aluminum having quite low uh, damping you know you get this. So, these three recordings we have done with this solid insert. Now, we are going to replace this solid insert, uh, this solid aluminum bar by another aluminum bar and you should look at it very carefully that this aluminum bar has actually the small holes here. These are not through holes, only up to a certain level the hole is done. The reason is that in the top level, then there will be further stress concentration in the system. And this small small holes, we have actually filled it up with viscoelastic material and we are going to put it in the same region here and we are going to carry out the same experiment with this system. You can see that the sound got changed, meaning thereby there is much more energy dissipation in this system. So, thus we have hit both of these samples. Now, we are going to see the recorded result. So, now we can focus into the results that we are getting into the system. We are now going to show the frequency response function first for this solid aluminum bar and as you can see here that there are several frequencies that is appearing as we hit this system and we have chosen this frequency, the second frequency which is 3366 hertz and its amplitude is 23.7 and the quality factor is 7.79 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, this is when we are considering a solid aluminum bar and we heat it, this is the frequency response function FRF and this is the amplitude. Uh, that we are finding which is 23.7 and the resonating frequency correspondingly is 3366. Now, from there if we go to the other bar where we have developed the stress concentration and where we have applied this viscoelastic material artificially. Now, if we go to that then we will see that the frequency has actually reduced, it is 3289 hertz and also the amplitude in comparison to 23.7, now the amplitude is 4.29. So, the amplitude has actually come down one fifth of the amplitude that it had when there was no such holes and the viscoelastic inserts that was there in the system. So, that is a fantastic improvement that you, we can see. In fact, if we look both of them, then you can see that this blue part is actually when it is not damped and the red one is actually when it is damped and we can see that how fast it is damping with the red one. And it is this particular frequency where we have seen that the uh, amplitude has come down very, very sharply. So, this is what uh, we can say is a very good strategy in terms of enhancement of structural damping. For this particular analysis, we have used a trial version of Buzz Osonic software. This we have used and using that we have carried out this particular analysis. We are going to talk about viscoelastic materials and linear viscoelastic models. Thank you.